Eight men are under arrest tonight, and two more are being sought in connection with a million dollars theft, a theft of a million dollars worth of securities and heavy construction equipment. Some of the men purportedly have organized crime connections. According to John Miller, the theft of construction equipment is widespread, and that situation is the basis of an exclusive report John has been investigating for the past month now. At the news conference today, Assistant New York State Attorney General John Fine, flanked by the state police and customs agents, unraveled a complicated scheme to steal heavy construction equipment from the Wise Construction Company in Brooklyn. To look at the operation on paper, it was as complicated as any large corporation. A map showing the routes through which the stolen goods were distributed looked like an airline schedule. We ask Fine how widespread the problem of construction theft and fencing was. His answer was no surprise. National problem of massive proportions. In fact, the United States Customs Service has a special cargo theft squad that concentrates their efforts on recovering such property before it leaves the United States. And what would you say the extent of the organized crime involvement is? Would you say that every piece of stolen construction equipment eventually finds its way to an organized crime fence or an organized crime outlet? Well, without characterizing the defendants, the criminals that have been taken into custody by the police and the Customs Service, the nature of the criminal conspiracy itself clearly exemplifies the kind of organized criminal activity that you've been discussing. In New York City, at any given time, there are dozens of construction jobs going on, both large and small. From each to one degree or another, there is thievery. Stealing is one thing, murder is another. Take the case of the Chrysler Building. A massive renovation project has been going on there for months. Building materials and welding equipment has been disappearing every day. Many of the thefts were not even reported to police. Then, a few days before Thanksgiving, a work foreman was beaten to death and thrown out a 56-floor window. At the renovation site a few days before, another man who worked in the foreman's group mysteriously fell down a flight of stairs. He is still in Bellevue Hospital, where his doctors told police it looked more like a beating than a fall. According to police sources close to that case, the two men had threatened to expose a pair of workers who had been stealing. Apparently, the two men suspected in the killing had not been splitting the take with the other workers, as dictated by custom. Today, at the Chrysler Building, the renovation work continued. But when asked about the beating of one worker and the murder of another, no one seemed to remember very much. According to the police department, uh, tons of stuff has been disappearing from this job every day. I didn't know about it. You know that uh, one guy uh, fell down the stairs here and is in the hospital to this very day, and another guy was uh, thrown out a window on the 56th floor. Oh, happened before my time. How about you? You ever hear that stuff? I uh, wasn't working here at the time. Uh, Do you hear about it from some of the guys on the job? No, no, nothing was going on here. Make you nervous at all to know that uh, two, one guy's dead and another's in the hospital from this job? It's all in day's work. The theft of equipment from construction sites is not exactly a new problem. It is said within the industry that the cost of such thefts are added on to the price of the job. It's part of the plan. As one informed police source told us, it's a tradition in the business. The men get their salary and all they can steal, literally. And the game is a tough one. The stakes are high, the money is big, and at least in one case, murder is not out of the question for those who get in the way. John Miller, Channel 5 News.